Hi, everyone, and welcome back on day two of Character Design here with Sarah Keen Lee. Hi, Sarah. Buddy. Hey, everybody. It's good. movement in the chat and of course a big hello to Vudoval that is here helping us throughout the stream posting some very useful link and also I can see so many people saying hello uh, I can see Peter I was like I see Sarah in the chat <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice Paloma nice to see you I remember you from yesterday when we we're talking about Pablo Picasso and we have Valeria Gonzalez, Jotirmia, uh, Mona and Peter, Steve, ciao how's it going? Uh, and we have Mallory as well. Terence, let us know, guys, where you are tuning in from. I'm here streaming from Manchester in the UK, and Sarah is from Misty, I believe. Mm -hmm. Connecticut. <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, um, as you, if you don't know me yet, I'm an Italian designer, uh, as I say, based in Manchester, where I run my design studio. And I'm going to let Sarah introduce herself again for those of you that are tuning in with us for the first time. We already uh, started yesterday introducing Illustrator on the iPad, and I'm going to here share some work. As you can see on my screen, this is some of the amazing artwork that Sarah creates on uh, Illustrator, and she's going to tell us more uh, about her in a second but i also want to share with you her instagram which is you are super duper and also her twitter uh, where you can interact with her uh, but before we can start i have a couple things uh, to let you know first of all let's jump into the schedule for today because we have a very busy day ahead here at adobe live we started with designing a responsive landing page with elise todd followed by the first challenge of the day with the amazing Budaval in photoshop followed by character design with anthony johns and then just before us the amazing andrew ocrado launched the day number one of the illustrator daily creative challenge and now we're here here with Sarah for another character design stream and we'll be reviewing your submission so I'm going to talk to you about it in a second after us the uh, daily credit challenge with Peter Del Tondo in uh, XD and then design in the dark with Jordan and Andrew. Uh, but let me show you the page where you can learn more about the Daily Creative Challenge. If you haven't, haven't taken part to the Daily Creative Challenge yet, this is the time to start. It's actually day one with Andrew. They're so much fun. All you have to do is to head on behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator and make sure to click on the big blue button in order to participate to the challenge. Then scroll down and here you have the replay, which you can watch after our video and the get started file so you can literally follow along the video and produce your own daily creative challenge. Then the second part of the challenge after watching and producing the work alongside Andrew, you can join the community chat, which is our fantastic Discord server, where you can post your own work by heading into the feedback challenge channel and then clicking on the little plus icon at the bottom of the chat. Um, I'm you can post your own work and if you post your work there right now or maybe you can get inspired by sarah's work and produce your little challenge at the end of the stream me and sarah are gonna jump into discord and review your work live so make sure to submit 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 the work you also have a link above the chat and remember if you're watching from youtube make sure to head on behance.net slash live and you can click on the challenge tab above the chat in order to participate to the challenge and last thing before we pass on to Sarah and we recap what we done yesterday I uh, want to make sure to let you know that if you post also your challenges on Behance you have the chance to be featured because we keep our eyes on your work all the time and as you can see you can have all categories but all the challenges are displayed but in this case there is the also illustrator challenge which is the one that we'll be reviewing today and those are your work featured so make sure to uh, publish your work on discord maybe you can gather some big feedback finalize it and then publish that on behance using the hashtag daily uh, ai daily challenge in order to be discovered on behance but i think i have blabbed more than enough sarah let's recap what you've done yesterday tell us more about you and we were talking about our uh, career in design and illustration and maybe we can show what we've done yesterday so let's jump into the ipad and maybe share information about illustrator on the ipad as well yeah. Oh, I'm so excited to be back. So for those who weren't here yesterday, hello. It's nice to see everyone in the chat. 
my name is Sarah Keenly, and I am a character designer and illustrator um, uh, by nights and weekends. This is my passion that drives me in all things. By day, I'm a product designer, and I've been working in tech for about 20 years now. Uh, but everything that I do, I look for ways to bring whimsy and character into it. And uh, so a bit, it's been just great to, to be here with all of you and sharing this. Um, yesterday, we started on our project. We're actually going to continue this project today. And what you can see right now on my iPad is a basically a mock-up of an iPhone. And what we worked on yesterday was four custom icons for, uh, for your phone's I, uh, home screen. Um, we created one for Twitter, one for WhatsApp, one for Chrome, and uh, one for Instagram that I haven't put a label on yet. Um, but the whole idea here is that we're going to create some more character-based icons to customize uh, a phone's home screen. Um, and I would love to take recommendations uh, from all of you. If you have a favorite app, uh, we'll create icons for it today. Where we left off yesterday was with a Facebook icon. And I know that there was some talk in the chat about turning the the Facebook icon into a snake and so I think I think that's what we'll do uh, today to kick it off we had a few other suggestions uh, slack Facebook Pinterest and discord um, but we can also see what people are excited about today for us to focus on um, and of course all of this is being created in Illustrator on the iPad which I am so very excited about and uh, can't wait to share more of of it with all of you. Um, I've been in the beta group for a few months now and uh, getting really comfortable with, with the app and how it works both on the iPad, but also how it, uh, it connects seamlessly to the desktop version of iPad, which is super awesome. So yeah, uh, please, if you have questions about Illustrator on the iPad, please feel free to ask them. Um, we'll share as much as we can, as much as we know. Um, and uh, yeah, I think unless Claudia, you think there's more we should I just wanted to let everyone know that we are working in beta, so this is not being released yet, and it's going to be released on the 21st of October during the amazing Adobe Max, but now you can already click on the link that I'm sure the amazing Val is going to share in chat in order to uh, have a pre-order. If you do click and on the pre-order, you'll be able to access Illustrator on the iPad before the general public. So you'll get a preview, you can publish some um, work maybe on your Instagram with the tag Illustrator on the iPad before everyone else. So make sure to click on that link and get your pre-order. And I just wanted to say before we get started, uh, uh, hello to our international community. We have Jotirmia following us from India and then Mariana from Budapest. And then we have Joe Dorgu from Nigeria. And uh, we have some French going on as well. And then we have Peter uh, from Stockholm, Valeria from Mexico. I, I know that Steve is from New Zealand. Uh, Bartos is in London. Biola, Anissa, a big hello to everyone. I love this community and this chat. And again, uh, oh, Vudaval is saying do a creative cloud icon. Oh my God, oh, we, yes, well, you're amazing. No, I don't think we did. Anybody asked for that before. That's a great idea. No, so before we get started, Sarah, I just wanted to remind everyone that this is a super safe space. Uh, any question you have about Illustrator, workflow, career as a freelance, career as an artist, we are here to share our insights. Sarah is here to uh, reply to your questions about Illustrator, especially Illustrator on the iPad and our experience in the beta. So remember, feel free to ask any question related to these topics. We are here to grow and learn together. Yesterday, we learned a lot. I don't know, Sarah, if you brought any sketch, but yesterday we were talking about showcasing some sketches as well just sure. um oh Budaval says peter's idea not mine <laughs> good job peter that's so amazing um yes fantastic so i think we can start and remember i keep my eyes on the chat and in the meantime don't forget to submit your work because I, I believe we're going to have a, a countdown um for the uh, daily credit challenge review is coming just about 20 minutes before the end of the stream so you have some times yet but as i say as well maybe you don't have finished off your your challenge you just are looking for inspiration don't worry we can review your work in progress as well maybe you have different variation you want to showcase we are here just to help each other so go with the questions we're here taking inspiration sarah is here taking also inspiration from the chat for the app so 
feel free to let us know. I'll keep my eyes peeled and Sarah, you can start working. I'm here taking notes as well. All right, great. Um, maybe what I'll do first is show a few sketches and, and talk about process. Uh, what we did yesterday and what we'll do today, I'm, I'm purely going to work in, in Illustrator, uh, which is uh, something that I've been doing more and more, especially since I have iPad on the uh, <laughs> iPad on the Illustrator, <laughs> Illustrator on the iPad, so I can be a lot more mobile. And when I have an idea, I can actually work it out here. Um, but when I'm working on more complex compositions, uh, similar to the ones that you see in the background of, of this video, I always start with sketches and we talked yesterday about sharing some of those. Um, I've been using Fresco more recently to do those sorts of sketches. Um, and I rely pretty heavily on basic shapes, but you can see like really early sketches are rough. Um, this is, I, I appreciate that this is a safe space because this is the sort of thing that I normally wouldn't want to show people, but this is kind of working out positions of characters and, and things that I, I, I might want to explore in a piece. I'm, I'm not actually sure. Oh, this was a, uh, a character oh, design. So this was a fan art challenge <laughs> that I did uh, a few weeks ago, um, just working on a 30 second drawing of someone else's character. But again, I just very, really quickly, uh, just using a pencil tool in Fresco, just work through ideas. Um, Fresco has uh, shape guides now, which make it really easy to uh, get more perfect shapes when you sketch. And so here I was working on an idea for a character like monster mashup app uh, where you could swipe across and change the character features. And again, just really rough sketches. Um, and and yeah, I, I, the, the thing that I love is that you can now take uh, a screen from Fresco like this or your file from Fresco and you can import that into Illustrator and if I jump back over, um, there's this little place um, icon uh, in the toolbar with all of your options for importing. And so you can actually go into your cloud documents and there you can see those uh, fresco sketches that I had created. So I can bring those in. You can bring them in as separate layers and work on them um, or you can trace right over them. And that's normally what I'll do. Um, let me find a more complex piece. So a few weeks ago, I did some uh, Adventure Time uh, character fan art and uh for that i actually i can we can jump right into that um Ooh, thank you so much sarah that's that's absolutely amazing to see the process and sharing you know all the before oh those are so amazing <laughs> <laughs> so these were basically traced right over the sketches that i had done in fresco um and then i basically made all of my favorite characters for this piece and then uh and then worked on the actual mandala by making copies of those um, characters. So being able to move between Fresco, which I use as my pencil sketchbook, and into Illustrator to create the vectors and, 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 and really think through the composition is pretty much my workflow for everything that I do. Uh, so that looks gorgeous. Sarah, we got a question from Alexandrine saying Great. that um, Alexandrine is interested to, in knowing which iPad you're using in size because she's looking into the best way to work and be mobile at the same time. Ah, wonderful question. Uh, so Alexandrine, I have a, an iPad Pro. Um, it's the 12.9 inch model. I like that size because uh, it's it's small enough that you can still carry it around in a bag, but it is large enough. It's, it's basically the size of like a 13 inch laptop. Um, or a piece of paper. And so it feels really natural to hold and work with. I like having that space also because I, I don't have a Cintiq or a tablet on my desk. Um, I, I like to be able to use my iPad as a tablet. Uh, and so if you're using apps that let you mirror your screen, I like to have as big an iPad as I can get. So I'm a big fan of that. Uh, and of course, also your good old Apple Pencil cannot do better than this as a stylus. It is amazing. Um, and a good, the other thing I would mention if you're looking for something to make you more comfortable in mobile is to invest in a really good screen pr protector. Um, I have one that mimics the feel of paper so that when I'm drawing, oh, wow. um, it has a little bit more texture to it. And uh, that makes it feel a lot, a lot more like sitting down with a sketchbook. Fantastic. Uh, Alexandrine said, okay, good to know. She's a product designer, by the way. That's why her questions to be on the way and to, to worry about sizes as well. Uh, Mona is saying that she just got her 12.9 inches for generation and she's in love. Oh, and right, Mona. We got my mom in the chat writing in Italian. Mom, <laughs> it's English only. 
Oh, I love it. By the way, she's a big fan of your work. Yesterday, she was asking, you know, what I was doing, what I, you know, what I was hosting, and she's absolutely in, work, in love with your work. Oh, um, well, thank you. Uh, she said it looks like mom. a mandala. <laughs> so. I love it. Oh, that's so funny. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Fantastic. So keep those questions coming while Sarah works and we're going to be exploring some of the tools. Yesterday we have already seen some of the Illustrator tools. Sarah show us uh, the favorite one. Let us know if you have questions regarding the upcoming tool on the iPad and don't forget to go and grab your pre-order with Illustrator on the iPad in order to have access to the app uh, before the general release to the public. And uh, just a quick reminder before I leave Sarah back to you while you build this lovely snake that is coming together, um, that we're going to be reviewing the daily creative challenge uh, very soon about the end of the stream. So make sure to submit your work on Discord because we're going to be there reviewing the work with Sarah. And of course, we're here to help. So any question, especially in Illustrator or Illustrator on the iPad, we're here. Or suggestions, questions or suggestions, I guess. <laughs> Love it. Oh, everyone is sharing love to my mom. That's super sweet. <laughs> oh, it's great to have moms in the chat. Yes. My parents, they're on their 70s and they're learning how to use Photoshop. So I find that Beautiful. extremely... Yes. Very, very exciting. What are we doing here with this beautiful new icon? All right. So I want to finish up our Facebook icon from yesterday. And the suggestion we had in chat as we wrapped up was to, um, instead of adding legs to the, uh, the letter F for Facebook um, was to maybe curl the bottom of it and turn it into a tail and, and then maybe have a tongue, a forked tongue coming out for, uh, yes. for a snake. Um, and then we'll have to think of what we do with the bar uh, on the F. Maybe that could be like a bone that's sticking through the, the snake. Or a bow. Can the, can a a snake bow. have a bow? Yes. <laughs> yes. We'll make it a bow. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. We have a we have a, a a very elegant snake that has got a bow yeah, tie a, as well. It's a fancy snake. <laughs> fancy snake. Deal. I thank you so much for your comment. That's super sweet. And Mariana is saying Buonasera. I love this international chat. We got English, French. Everyone is saying hello. Raymond, oh, nice to see you. And also, our amazing guest was in the chat before. Nice to see you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me go ahead and see if I missed any questions. I think everyone was just very excited about your um, your your design before. It's looking super cool. So which tool are we using now? So right now I'm just using just basic shape tools. I thought I might put like a little rattle on the bottom or on the on that tail. Got a little rattle there. I'm going to drop this back in layers. So one thing that's really nice um, in working with the iPad is that there's a contextual menu that presents itself for just about anything you select on the artboard. So if I select the eye here, you'll see this little gray menu up here below it. And that has quick access to tools that you might need. So uh, you have opacity, so you can uh, change that with having to jump into a menu. Uh, you have stroke width. You have your uh, layer order or stacking order. Um, lots of little tools that will just help you uh, get more things done. Now, all of those are also available in the various uh, properties menus, uh, but having these contextual menus just saves you just a ton of time as you work. And so uh, I rely on those pretty heavily. So Joe Dorgu says there needs to be one for Google. We did it yesterday, Joe Dorgu. So let's suggest another one. We did a, a lollipop with an eye and it'll also also look almost like a search bar like you know oh, no yeah, search yeah. bar the lens i don't know yeah you know what i mean like the icon, icon for a search search yeah. icon thank you <laughs> so sarah uh many of the people in the chat already um have shared some time with me here during adobe lives and they know that i make up a lot of words in uh, italian english i love uh, we that. have a new cloudy vocabulary so just just letting you know that that may happen during the stream that i make up my own vocabulary as you go so that's fantastic uh, that'll just keep me on my toes <laughs> so also if you guys want to uh give any advice to sarah regarding any other app uh definitely creative cloud it's a cool one i don't know if you want to take in the challenge um, but here we are creating multiple apps. Let us know your favorite apps and perhaps uh, 
which one you wanted to set for for Sarah to design today. So we can go with your suggestions here. We're very happy to uh, to have your suggestions. So absolutely. Let us let us see in the chat which app do you want to see illustrated up. That'd be so cool if the you know imagine your entire phone is fully stylized. I don't know if I'll ever have the time to do that. So Sarah, you say that you were gonna uh, make those available as well. Yes. So uh, after today's stream, um, and we'll, I actually, I had maybe lofty goals for the last one. I thought we would get more icons done. Uh, <laughs> but after today's stream, whatever we've completed, I'll make available. Uh, we'll post it as a Behance project um, and attach the, uh, the Illustrator file to it. So if you want to grab the file uh, and, and use these icons or take them as a starting point for your own, you'd be Everyone is more than welcome to do that. I will. I'm having a lot of fun with this too, so I may actually continue to add um, icons uh, to the set as uh, as I go. Because I'm going to use these on my phone. This is a selfish project. This is so that I can. Super cool. Then we want a screenshot, please. <laughs> Absolutely. So, right. Mariana is saying, "What about Behance? I think that's another fantastic idea. Behance oh icon. And yesterday, yes. I think someone said contacts." Yep, I heard um, contact. We have also Yuri's asking a question. Hey, Sarah, if you need to create, let's say, three icons of real things for one project and two icons clearly best will be flat. OK, I'm going to have to reread the question because or um, so you need to create three icons for one project and two icons clearly best will be flat and one is only understandable in third space. 3D space. Mm. So I don't know if it's me not gathering. How would you make them similar? So that's that's a oh, tough one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's that's definitely a tough question. I think um, if I was approaching uh, that uh, that project, um, what I would probably do is look for elements in the flat icon and in the 3D icon that I might be able to make similar. So perhaps you can uh, use a stroke width that is common um, in, in both the flat and the 3D icon. Uh, the app that I work on day-to-day uh, -day uh, for my day job, we have some similar things like that where we actually have some 3D, uh, uh, some icons represented as 3D objects, but they are actually just uh, just strokes with some, with some color. That might be a way to do it. So I would just look for um, elements that are consistent between the two or that color you could palette. introduce. Or color palette, yeah, absolutely. Um, and you might just want to see like how much can you pare back on the three D icon um, to make it uh, to make it similar. So maybe you have less shading in it. Maybe uh, the color on the three D icon is flat. Um, that might be another way to uh, to approach that. But icon design is a very very challenging thing to do, and. Uh, there are, there are people out there who could probably give you far better advice than I am <laughs> uh, right now, but I think that's how I would tackle that problem. Trying to find si similarities that they can be build consistency. We have another yeah, question yeah. from Alexandrine. Uh, for people that aren't on social media much, te uh, for example, she was requesting Slack, text messages, Gmail, G Calendar, and what about Messenger or Audible? That's super cool. Audible is really nice. Oh, these um, are great ideas. Oh, TikTok. We got to do a TikTok one. I love what? TikTok. Okay, so I love those. <laughs> I love that. What should we, what do we make for TikTok? What would the TikTok, TikTok yes, so be? Please give us some advice. We're going to be brainstorming live for a TikTok icon. Because, oh my God, I'm loving this bow tie, by the way. It's looking so cool. <laughs> <laughs> the pencil rattlesnake of Facebook. <laughs> Someone before um, wrote a uh, snake book. <laughs> snake book. Perfect. So Raymond is asking, does this app work on the old iPad Pro? Um, I believe that it would. I think as long as you are able to run a, uh, I, probably iOS 13 and above, where the current version is 14, um, mm -hmm. But as long as you can run that, I think you would be fine with the previous iPad Pro. Um, you can probably check out the requirements on the pre-order page in the App Store, though, if you want to double check. So 
if TikTok could be the tea dancing, oh yeah, we can do something dancing related because like Ooh. the majority of the video on TikTok is like silly music and now a lot of facial expression with the, uh, I believe that Bella is the name of that TikToker that got super famous with her like weird facial expression that she does with the music. So yeah, a lot of people say dancing person with a clock counting down. Hmm, very, oh. very interesting. So okay. I think Maybe that- Maybe dancing clock. Oh, that's super cool. <laughs> That'll be super fun. Um, and I think that so far we have many different uh, input. Uh, we had also YouTube. Um, the one that they were man mainly mentioned in the chat were TikTok and Adobe Creative Cloud. And there was another one that was Audible. So why don't we just do a vote in the chat between those three? So once you finish with this one, we know what to start with. So Perfect. let us know if we do TikTok or YouTube or Adobe Creative Cloud. Let's start with one of these three. We'll eventually do all of them, but let's see. Let us know in the chat which one you want to start with. Uh, what do you vote for? I vote for TikTok, but I don't want to influence the chat. <laughs> you get a vote, <laughs> is the question. I got one vote in just one vote. <laughs> Let us know which one you want to start from. Oh my God, this is starting super cute. All right, we're going to give him, and give the snake some, some fangs too. Biala saying Facebook is looking good. Oh, great, Bella. Glad you, glad you like it. I'm, uh, Never quite sure. I think I talked about this yesterday. Most of the time, especially if I'm working on characters for myself, I'm never quite sure what they're going to look like or what they're even going to be when I start uh, creating them. I, I, I talked about using an eye as the starting point for every character. And uh, and yeah, I after, the, after that, we just kind of see what happens. And that has certainly been the case for this Facebook mm -hmm. icon. That looks so cute. Yeah, because I remember that you were me mentioning um... Uh, some arms and legs, and then it just completely change. Yeah, you just, you have to go where the eye takes you. Yes. Like so I'm literally like marking on a piece of paper because the chat is going fast. <laughs> and I'm literally marking how many, looks like TikTok is winning now. Okay. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. And we don't have many YouTube at all. So maybe we can leave that last. And we got a few Adobe Creative Cloud. So is your time to vote right now? Let us know because I'm, I'm taking note, I promise. Like I'm literally, I don't know if <laughs> you guys can see this, but I'm literally oh, got on my post-it note. Oh, we got more Creative Cloud. Okay, then Steve is saying it looks like Adobe Creative Cloud got to be the second one. So we do TikTok All and right. then Adobe Creative Cloud. Perfect. Fantastic. What a, what a great organization we're here in chat. <laughs> yeah. Thanks everyone for, for the ideas. I love this. So you guys are our creative directors. And I'm I need a creative here. director. I'm here as an assistant. <laughs> I'm Sarah's <Okay>. assistant. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go TikTok. Yes. And then we have definitely Adobe Creative Cloud. There's CC, 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 Creative Cloud is coming up. I almost beating, almost beating TikTok. I think TikTok is still one or two. Jatimia voted for YouTube, so it looks like <laughs> Peter Stevens is like, that's me in the morning. Oh, Steve is also saying the Apple logo needs oh. a redo desperately. Oh, now we got Apple as well. <laughs> okay, so TikTok has already won, so we can take TikTok off, and I think Adobe and maybe Apple. But let us know. I'm going to keep my eyes in the chat to see if there is any other suggestion. Maybe something crazy comes up. I think the contact cool. yesterday was really cool. Yeah, I like the idea of contacts. I think there's there's definitely room, and I can work on these outside of uh, today's stream as well, but having replacements for all of the standard icons is, is always nice. Mm -hmm. So... I'm going to share. Oh, Voodoo Valley say, put a worm in the apple. <laughs> yes. Perfect. So I'm going to share some of my favorite tools again today. So the one I'm using right now is called Shape Builder. And I'm going to back up here. So I have um, two circles and I want the intersection of those two circles. And this is a pretty simple example, but 
it is a way to show off uh, this tool. So we're all used to, if you're used to Illustrator, um, you've probably seen the Pathfinder tools that let you do things like combine shapes, split them apart, um, get the intersection of tools. And those are wonderful. And, and something I really like in Illustrator and iPad is that I can see previews of what all of those uh, different Pathfinder tools do. Um, I know that as I was learning Illustrator, I would basically have to click all of them to see uh, what would happen when I use them. Um, but something that is really cool uh, on Illustrator and the iPad is I have this shape builder option. And with shape builder, um, I can easily combine shapes. I can draw a line between these two shapes to combine them into one. Um, or in my case, I want to I want to get the intersection of it, so I can actually just remove uh, the extra uh, pieces of those two shapes until I get uh, the shape that I want. And I don't know, it's just a lot of fun. Every time I use it, it makes me smile. I I love that feature. Um, Create it, new shapes and keep the same uh, uh, appearances as well. Yeah, there's no other steps. I don't have to ungroup anything. It's just ready to go. It's a you know a new vector shape that um, that I can work with. And again, it's these time saving um, time saving features that just change your workflow uh, once you can work in a mobile way uh, with Illustrator. And so also, this is... I, sorry, it's going to interrupt you, oh, Sarah. Yeah. Is the align tool in the bar underneath as well in the option bar, object bar, or whatever we? Um, it is not. So the align tool is over on the side in the tool menu. Okay. Um, that is interesting that it's not. I wonder if I select, let's try something here. If I select these. No, so that's only in the uh, toolbar. Okay. Uh, but you have all of the same uh, align tools. And then for symmetry and things, I, I use the flip uh, tools quite a lot. Um, and those are there as well. And for those in the chat, they're asking when they can download Illustrator on the iPad. I see that Voodoo Val has already placed a link in chat. So if you're watching from Behance, make sure to head on Behance.net. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to head on Behance.net slash live because Voodoo Val has placed a link to get your pre-order of um, Adobe Illustrator app on the iPad. So right now we're working in beta. Um, me and Sarah are part of the pre-release program with the app. So we had the chance to play a little bit. Sarah definitely more than me because she created so many wonderful illustration pieces with it that are already available for you to uh, look on our behance. But if you head on the click, you can have your pre-order, which means that you will receive a notification with the app before the general release, which will be on October 21st in occasion of the wonderful Adobe Max. And talking about Adobe Max, if you head on max.adobe.com, you'll be able to discover the wonderful event that is going to take place this year with all so many amazing speakers. And of course, it's for free. If you head on my uh, Instagram, I have a, a link also there with uh, my sessions in Photoshop and in design. So plenty of things to do. We definitely keep you busy here. <laughs> It really is going to be a busy few days. My, I worked out my schedule of all of the events that I want to attend. And I'm going to have to take, basically, I'm going to take the time off work. I'm going to have yes. a, a pretty packed, pretty packed group of days. I also love that the sessions are, they work well regardless of your time zone. Um, this is definitely not a North American centric conference, which I always appreciate. Absolutely. And they will be translated. So as far as I know, my, oh, my session cool. is translated in Spanish, uh, French, uh, I believe also Japanese. Um, so it's super international. And I know for sure that at least uh, one of the session breakouts that I'm doing, I'm doing one for American time and one for uh, European time. So uh, there are also live q and I will be there doing Max during my Max session to answer your questions on the app and the new features. Because it's not only uh, Illustrator on the iPad that is getting unveiled, but also all the amazing Creative Cloud 2021 with all the new feature. And let me tell you, they're pretty tasty. So you really want to keep your eyes peeled because there are so many new fantastic things coming. Uh, also, thank you, wait. the Sensei Adobe Artificial Intelligence is going to play a fantastic, huge part, making our lives so much easier while we work. That's so exciting. I can't wait. I always feel like Max feels a little bit like Christmas mm -hmm. because you That's get all true. of the new app updates and all these new features. It's, it's very exciting. 
Yuris is asking, hey chat, in, is there a schedule of Adobe Max? Which time? I couldn't find one. So if you head on my um, Instagram, which is I am Clary, um, there is a Max schedule tab into my link tree. I got many different links and one of them is for Max. So if you click in there, there, there is access to the schedule. Um, at the moment, I think there is plates with my name, but you can just delete my name and you can browse the entire schedule uh, for Adobe Max. Oh, Peter is saying, since Sarah loves Carters, please do a Clary lookalike icon. <laughs> That's a very good idea. <laughs> That'll be funny. Um, I, if we don't do it here, I'm definitely going to send you a commission. That's the question, Sarah. Do you take commissions like for like illustration private project because I know you have a you, you mentioned that that's more your passion and then you have a, a day job mm -hmm. but you take commissions for uh, illustration work as well like on your night yeah job? yeah I absolutely do um, I uh, and really in a variety of media so some of my work um, I, I like to make physical so the uh, one of the things that we showed yesterday was a mandala that I had shown at a gallery in Berlin last year uh, and that was all paper cut. So I created all of the characters in Illustrator and then I cut them out, luckily not by hand. Um, I have a tool for it called the Cricut, which allows you to cut <gasps> paper really easily. Um, one of the amazing live streamers on Behance, uh, Alicia, uh, oh, I'm blanking on her last name, Kalan. Oh. Uh, she is an amazing paper cut artist and uh, is far better than I, creates amazing 3D, um, uh, paper cut uh, sculptures and objects, uh, but I did I, I I do paper cut work like that in uh, uh, as commissions, um, and also just for gallery showings. I also like to create masks, and so the images that you see in the background of this stream, um, I've also actually recreated using acrylic and vinyl oh, wow. stickers uh, as masks, um, and so I've created those for people as well. But I love to do digital work. Um, I've done brand design. Uh, Pretty much, pretty much anything. Anything that lets me be creative, I am up for. I've painted shoes for people. Um, I'm That's up so for cool. all of it. That's so cool. And we're loving this TikTok. It's coming up nice. Maybe we can do like the John Travolta hands, like one up and one down. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Sutter and Night Fever, I think that. Great idea. Um, let's see. The chat keeps moving. Let me see. Uh, Budava is saying that she would love to know more about the Carter Conference. So I think she's talking about um, oh, uh, my pictoplasma. Mind. Pictoplasma, yes, that yesterday mentioned. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can definitely, Sarah, I mean, I'm going to let you talk about it. I'm just, I just went as a visitor and take a photo of Sarah's work before I even met her. So <laughs> oh, that that is so, uh, that's amazing to me. I appreciate that's a that genuine, so much. That's a genuine appreciation. I didn't know who you were before. And I, as a, I didn't know you in person. I know you were as an artist, but I got I, I just kind of like got this attraction toward your work. And I just it's the only photo that I have of that room. So, oh, wow. So Let that know. there. So Pictoplasma is a uh, is a character festival that has existed now for, I think, close to 15 years. Um, I'm just going to back this up. I made a little mistake because I worked. Um, oh, no, how, how, do you, how do you go back on your straighter on the iPad? Oh, great question. So there are two ways uh, if you want to undo something. So at the very top of the UI, where I'm currently tapping, um, there are undo and redo buttons. But um, as you would hope for any app on the iPad, there are also shortcuts for those. So when I'm undoing, I'm actually just tapping twice uh, on the iPad and uh, all of those touch shortcuts because there are lots of gestures that you can learn. There's a nice little help menu to show you all of the different things that you can do. Um, there's also, and we looked at this a little bit yesterday, similar to Fresco, there's a touch modifier which allows you shortcuts into uh, with different features as well. And all of that information is in the little help icon. Um, but yeah, so Pictoplasma is this uh, character-based festival uh, started in Berlin about 15 years ago. Um, they hold usually two conferences a year, one in May in Berlin and one in New York in usually October or November. Um, that one is not going to happen this year. And for the very first time, because of the pandemic, um, Pictoplasma this year was held uh, uh, virtually. Um, and it had an amazing turnout. 
uh, I think they said there were 65,000 viewers. Yeah, I think it was I, more than that. It was nearly 70,000. I think it was 69. That's amazing. Super um, cool. And it's all about character design. So that can that can mean so many things. It can mean character design for movies, for art, for fashion. Uh, there are it's so colorful, isn't it? It, like... it really is. And uh, interestingly, and this happened before the pandemic, but interestingly, the theme of this year's was the mask. And um, so there were actually academics uh, talking about the mask as it's used uh, in in culture and in movies and in fashion. Uh, which was really, really fascinating. Um, but it's uh, in addition, and if you're really interested in character design, something I really recommend, um, Pictoplasma also has an event, an event um, that happens once a year called the Pictoplasma Academy. And this is an opportunity to uh, get together with other character designers, whether experienced or, uh, or new to character design and practice your craft for eight days. Um, with a couple of uh, really awesome character design teachers. Uh, uh, and you spend eight days together in Berlin um, <gasps> just working on character design. And the uh, one of the benefits to doing that and why I was in Berlin last year, because I participated in that workshop, um, is Sorry, that you get, to, you get so to go back the next year and share a piece in that group show. And so what you saw, uh, Claudia, was uh, the piece that I created uh, for my class's group show as a part of the workshop. Um, so it was Fantastic. a wonderful opportunity. And, and, and how, how, how do you get to participate to the to Pictoplasma? Did they pick you? Did they pick your portfolio? So you apply, you send in uh, some examples of your work and um, and they, they usually select between, I think, 30 and 40 people to go. Uh, they've actually done it. There was one that was held in uh, Mexico, but mm -hmm. primarily they hold them in uh, in Berlin. Um, and it was it, it was wonderful. There were there were painters, there were animators, uh, there were more aspiring character designers like myself uh, who were there. But you you build up a little community, and I've kept in touch with the people I met uh, there, as well as the teachers, um, and they've been just great sources of inspiration for me. Um, so I highly recommend that if you want to check out Pictoplasma, um, they are uh, just pictoplasma.com. Yeah, Val has um, already put the link for everything. We got the link in chat for Pictoplasma oh, for the academy. Val has already. Uh, done everything perfectly as usual in order to help us to share all these. They games. actually and had a really cool speaker this year too, who spoke about um, participating in the Keith Haring uh, <gasps> brushes competition and talked about the piece that she made uh, for it, which was, which was really cool. And you're talking about the uh, Keith Haring competition with uh, the Adobe brushes? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. So we might want to say a little bit more about that. Um, Maybe afterwards we can also share um, the pages with the uh, Keith Earring brushes for, um, I think they're Photoshop brushes, is our yeah, or fresco, Photoshop, fresco, both Photoshop and Fresco mm -hmm. uh, brushes. And maybe I can send the link to Val as well. I'm sure Val can, I'm sure Val's got all the link already. Uh, but Keith Earring is a competition um, that will allow you to use the brushes. I already have downloaded, I think there is a, uh, CC library as well um, mm -hmm. that you that you receive when you apply and you can have fun with some spray brushes, chalk brushes, uh, crayons in order to try to replicate the wonderful Keith earring style but with your own in interpretation while you express yourself. And also uh, when you were uh, talking about uh, character design and we were talking about Pictoplasma, I just had a very um, uh, a very question that came to my head which is how many character design do we have in chat so uh, i remember yesterday we were talking about our job transitions and how we're really trying to follow our desires with the adobe app we are enabled to communicate our desires and idea and ourselves using the apps even if we were not uh, designers by trade like myself and many of you guys in chat but let me know in the chat if have you always been a designer are you a character designer do you want to be a character designer what you currently do i always like to uh learn what everyone is up to um while they're watching the video if you're here to learn if you're maybe maybe you've got some pros as well if you're just starting 
And by the way, uh, since I'm already interrupting you, Sarah, I want to remind everyone that in about 45 minutes, we will be reviewing your daily creative challenge. So make sure to click on the creative challenge tab above in chat in order to participate to the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Today, we'll be reviewing day number one with Andrew Ockrado, uh, designing at the Tour Eiffel, I believe, uh, with the uh, different object and the transform again tool. So super excited to see what you guys have done on Discord. Um, make sure to click on the link that Val is going to put in chat in order to post your work for review. And me and Sarah will be reviewing in about 45 minutes. Oh, I can't wait. This is Buddy, Have so you ever cool. been to the Eiffel Tower? I have been, I've actually um, lived in many different places. So I got a, a very nomadic life. I uh, recently, I was a little bit more stable in between San Francisco and Manchester. So change and movement has always been part of my life. I actually left pretty young to finish high school in Roanoke, Virginia, many years ago. Oh. <laughs> and uh, okay. yes, and I studied in many different places when I was young and I got addicted to travel. And Paris was one of the places where I lived for a few months as well, which was super fantastic and majestic. Have you visited the Tour Eiffel? I have. Um, when I was much younger, um, I'm not sure that I was quite old enough to truly appreciate it. <laughs> I was more interested in going to Euro Disney, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have been. Super cool. I would love to go back. One day but, when we can travel again. Yes, hopefully that's exactly what I was saying. We we'll maybe meet in America or in uh, Europe. We'll see. Oh what yeah, happens. I'll come to I'll come to Manchester. Yes, ma'am. We're here. Got a sister Ramirez as well in uh, uh, Manchester these days. Oh, very nice. Jatimia I... saying sorry. Oh no, go ahead. I was just reading a comment from Jatimia that says that I find character design very interesting. I also do a bit of of pencil sketching and I do want to explore characters in the traditional way first before going digital. Fantastic. Very nice. That's a great way to do it. Um, one thing that is uh, is nice and actually there are a lot of Pictoplasma artists um, on Behance uh, but if you want to go for a deep dive uh, there is a, a character encyclopedia on the Pictoplasma site where a lot of character designers have, have posted their work. And uh, also I should mention that a lot of the talks from previous events are there too. So if you wanna hear from people who are doing this as a profession, um, there are some really wonderful talks that you can uh, that you can tune into. And Peter is saying, I'm watching because it's fun. Yes, I like that. We like it fun. And especially with these amazing colors, Sarah, I so honored to be able to stream with your artwork behind me. It makes me feel oh, <laughs> so I appreciate that. immersed in the colors. Super, super gorgeous. And I agree, Peter. I hope that you guys are having fun. I'm definitely having fun being here. Always super thankful. Also, Peter is saying that he's a happy hobbyist and he's wanting to learn Illustrator and Photoshop, where you're in the right place to learn for sure. Safe space here at Adobe Live. Absolutely. And I think really, you know, one of the things that I've been really thankful for as someone who is very much, I think we're all uh, constantly learning, um, but being able to share work and getting over the anxiety around sharing work is so good for you because especially communities like what we have here in Behance, all these wonderful people in our chat, in the Discord, um, everyone is so giving and, and just take so much care in, in the thoughtful advice and feedback that they give. Um, and it really is a wonderful way to grow, is just to get your work out there, share it with people and, and, and take in that feedback. Um, and you'll be surprised how much faster you advance uh, when, you're, uh, yes. when you share your work. I agree so much. I, I I yet have to define myself as a designer. I I don't know how I was picked to be a part of the um, the beta as well and the Make It event. I'm so excited. I still struggle. Uh, I have probably from what other people said some of my best design and illustration that I haven't seen the light of the day. Uh, they are wrapped into a notebook under my bed and I still struggle uh, to show them. So even if I'm here with my face, I can talk for hours, but I'm still, uh, you know, learning in the process to, to learn and I feel like a beginner. And I think that, you know, everyone does feel from the beginner and being part of a place like Adobe Live is 
literally sharing this feeling, like, you know, like you were saying, Sarah, like fighting that anxiety of sharing our work together. And that's the thing that I appreciate the most from even when we were at the Make It um, event. What I really see from successful illustrator is their freedom. They don't mm-hmm. care. They just draw it. They want to draw it. They do it. And then it looks amazing. So I think it was amazing that you also showed our uh, your sketches today for this uh, for the same reason. And Joe yeah. Dark would say, yet to open Illustrator. So we have a lot of people that are starting. That's fantastic. Uh, also, if you head to the behance.net slash challenge slash uh, Illustrator, if you scroll down through the page, you'll be able to access uh, the app, the Adobe Illustrator app. And you'll be able also to download a free trial. Uh, so if perhaps you're just considering if to start to use Illustrator, that's a fantastic way to get into the app and start to play. Oh my gosh, we got a new TikTok. <laughs> we got so TikTok. Cool. Let's see, I'm gonna give this a consistent corner. Go. Super cool. Jack Watson is saying, love that message, Sarah. Oh, great to see Jack in the chat. Jack is a fantastic illustrator uh and i like to i kind of think of jack as a technologist in a lot of ways i've tuned into a lot of streams where uh jack's been doing uh svg animation and really really cool stuff so you should check out jack watson's streams um you will learn so much if you're learning about vector art and and animation um i am a huge fan and also, Sarah, um, you say that you stream regularly on Behance. I believe tomorrow will be you'll be also streaming on your Behance channel, and then Friday. Yes, I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays uh, from eight thirty p.m. Eastern time, which is uh, five p.m. Pacific. And I work on a variety of things. Um, I do a lot of vector art like this. I've been doing um, my own interpretations of album covers lately. Um, but I've, I've also been learning uh, Character Animator, which if you have not used it, I so highly recommend. Um, you can take your vector art and create a puppet that will uh, respond to your facial expressions and movements. Oh it gosh. is amazing. Professional animators are using this to do live streams with characters. Um, I think Character Animator is one of the unsung heroes of Creative Cloud. Um, so I've been doing some of some work with that on my streams, but a lot of my streams are about learning new tools. And so I'm learning the tool right along with with everybody else. And that's what makes it fun for me is I, I love this stuff. I love learning how to use software um, and just how to explore creativity. Like, how can I bring uh, my ideas and my characters to life and what tools are there to help me do that? That's super awesome. And I remember that yesterday we were geeking out regarding uh, this sort of stuff. And by the way, if we jump into the desktop today, I will love if you can show us something with Carter animation, just like just a little something, if it's possible. Uh, you know that I'm here like asking, <laughs> like I'm a fan, fan, asking fan questions. Can we see your work, please? <laughs> um, and I wanted to say um, also, um, Oh, sorry. I got distracted by Jack Watson in the chat that is uh, sharing your stream. That's very sweet. And he's like, Ash, Sarah, this is your stream. Jack, oh, we love you, your Jack. work. Thank you so much for, for sharing it. Um, yes. Yeah, so hopefully we'll be jumping into the desktop at some point. And I can see that now you're building the cloud. I am. So I think for Creative Cloud, we're going to create an artist cloud. Um, so I've just... I. Again, love to work with basic shapes. There are lots of ways you can create a cloud. I do it just by dropping lots of circles on the screen and then I'll use the combine. Oh, not that way. Gotta remember not to select your background. Um, I'll use the combine all tool. I could use shape builder, but it would be a lot more work. So I'll just use combine all and then I'll convert it to a path to get that uh, so single easy. shape. You make it look so easy. The app makes it look so easy. It, it really does. And and I think, you know, one of the things that I find intimidating, I found it intimidating about Fresco. I found it intimidating about uh, Illustrator as well, is that you, you start off with these new tools and maybe you're more comfortable on paper um, and what you want may not come through right away. And that can be really frustrating. And you really just have to give yourself time. Like, don't worry about creating, you know, beautiful pieces of artwork right away. Just experiment, see what all the tools do. Um, yes. and, and just allow yourself the freedom to explore without judgment. 
uh, and you'll be a lot happier in the long run. Uh, and I love how you start to work in uh, black and white first, and then you start to bring in the color one at a time. Yeah, that's really um, mostly because I most of the time, again, don't really know what I'm creating once I sit down <laughs> to do something. And so just not worrying about color, kind of reducing the number of decisions I need to make early um, and working in a black and white, especially if I'm tracing a sketch that I've done, just having a black and white outline is, is just so much easier. Uh, to work with. Oh, we're that's use, looking awesome. We're gonna use these same eyes, but I want I want a beret, I think, on this character. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe we'll, we can have like a pencil as a lightning bolt <gasps> coming out oh, of the that's bottom. Super cool. Super cool. And in the chat, that's uh, I, I finally remember what I was about to say because I got I, I got distracted. Uh, but uh, when we were talking about character animation, uh, me and Sarah, before the stream, we were geeking out regarding PC. I shared on my Instagram that I bought my new machine that I'm super excited about due to the heavy RGB fans that I <laughs> custom apply to it. So it's to say that I probably would spend more money on the RGB <laughs> rather than the machine. <laughs> but I, I recently custom made a PC, which I finally landed uh, about a week ago. And Sarah told me that she has done the same thing. So I'm transitioning from Mac to PC at the moment. I have both and I will still keep both uh, working with both because of also the beauty of working with the um, the cloud if you if you have a, an Apple ID. Uh, but let me know in the chat. I wanted to know how many of you um, have PC are working with PC and how many of you work with Mac? Let us know in the chat. I want to see what's the trend lately, PC yeah, or Mac? And I can a... see Keith in the chat as well. Sorry, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, he's saying, is that cloudy with their hair pulled back? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Let me move my headphone a second. Hello. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> PC, Mac all day. Oh, Jury, I think you, we're going to see a good split of yep. Mac and PC. Jury says, nah, my build is RGB less. PC girl there with Voodoo A lot of PC. Oh, well, actually, I need to do my tick again. And by the way, before <laughs> I, I left the pen with, I don't know if that ever happened to you guys, but I'm very good at drawing all my hoodies so now my hoodies has got all the trace of the pen because i kept talking and oh. <laughs> doodling on a white nice nice hoodie okay so i'm tracking again pc versus mac okay a lot of kubilai says mac and pc together oh, okay that's also an option voodoo says gotta work on a pc so i can play games yeah that's also it looks like we have more pc sarah all right PCs I, can be adjusted, Mac cannot. I think that's that's one of the um, that's one of the big benefits. I I needed something that was uh, that just had more power than than the Mac uh, that I had access to, and I like the flexibility of the PC. But this was the first time I think Bell or uh, Claudia, this was the same thing for you. This mm -hmm. was my first time using a PC in about. 15, 20 years, <laughs> 20. <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> so learning the keyboard shortcuts again uh, has been tricky. It's uh, There's been a learning curve there that I was not anticipating. Uh, but I like it for, I, I've been, uh, and that's what the background images are. I've been learning uh, to bring my characters to 3D. And, um, and so I wanted a, a computer that could really handle 3D rendering really well and a PC was better. But I'm also very interested now in what games are the PC users oh, yes. playing? And it looks like PC has won, as, at least for now. I'm literally checking my little ticks. Trying to be organized. <laughs> I have I'm a very impressed. horrible hand, handwriting. <laughs> so I really have to put a lot of effort into it. And we got a couple of both as well, but it looks like, let's see, 78% of computer users are PC. Mac is primarily a US thing. Oh, Joe Dorgo giving us some data here. Yeah, that's Michelle interesting. Michelle says, PC desktop, Mac laptop. That makes sense. That's basically what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, I have a Mac for work. And then I have an older 
personal Mac, which is very slowly, very slowly dying, I think. Um, but I have been enjoying, I'm enjoying the PC. It also has lots of LEDs and I am enjoying all the lights that it has. Claudia, I think I saw a, a screenshot of yours or a photo of yours too, that you've got some cool lights. My monster. Uh, it's a, it's it. a huge computer. I'm so excited. So I don't know if you guys can see my little ticks here taking the count, but a uh, PC looks like it's winning big time. And yours is say currently on the author world, which I believe is a game. Uh, I have a very addictive personality. So when I get stuck into do something like illustrating, I can just jump into it. And that's the reason why I stay away from games. Cause I believe that I can then get stuck and spend day and nights. And I, I've, I've kind of uh, pulled back from the shed, uh, my old Super Mario on a Super Nintendo. Oh, um, that's cool. So I'm actually here and there doing the princess, make the princess fly <laughs> on the cloud. <laughs> I love it. Am I dating myself? <laughs> Voodoo Val awesome. saying that she's an old school Diablo 2 fan. Ooh, very nice. Is Crash Bandicoot on PC or that's just for PlayStation? That, that was my thing. You can also get Crash on the Nintendo Switch. So I used to come back from school and when I had a good grade or something, I used to get on my knee and do that Crash Bandicoot. You know, when he gets when his hands <laughs> up and he just do. <laughs> that was my move. <laughs> that is awesome. I love it. All right. Michael gonna... Murray says, sorry, um, yeah. PC and No Man's Sky is a very beautiful nowadays. Oh yes, that is a, I have that on the PlayStation and that is a beautiful game. I actually, I think I, I get a fair amount of inspiration from, uh, from video games. Um, the music, the character design in games, um, Crash Bandicoot's a great example of a really cool, uh, really cool character. Um, and it but, got the mask uh, as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I forgot about that. <gasps> That's super cool. I'm loving the the little pencil coming out. Jatirmia say been playing just FIFA lately for quick breaks. Otherwise, I play for hours on story based games. Great choice. I like story based. I'm I'm not a very good online gamer. I'm too intimidated by all the kids who can just destroy me as soon as I hop in. <laughs> yes, um, I'm like <gasps> I don't know what to do. Krishna says, hello. Nice to see you, Krishna Main. Thank you for joining us. Jury says that then he rages at Super Lucky Tail on Game Pass. It's a kid the game. I'm not familiar with it. Val probably can give us more insight. Valeria Gonzalez is saying, oh my God, the cloud is so cute. I agree. Oh, thank you. We got a question for you from Peter Svensson. Sarah, right. do you find working with AI on iPad versus PC a big difference in the UI? Oh, great question. Um, so for me, there hasn't been a big difference. Um, the the tool set is, is very close. And so if you're comfortable on the desktop, um, I think you will have a relatively easy time getting comfortable on the iPad. Uh, if you use Fresco, you will also find that it is easy. The, the the layout of the app is very similar across both. Um, there are a few features that are uh, oops, that are different or that don't exist yet on the desktop, or maybe are coming, and I don't know about them. I'm not that much of an insider <laughs> to know what's happening on Illustrator. Um, <laughs> not an insider at all. Uh, <laughs> but but um, I think I'm going to make that pure blue. Uh, the, uh, the, the workflows are really similar. The pen tool is, is usually what I would judge any mobile vector app on is how easy is it to use the pen tool compared to how you would use it on the desktop. And I think the illustrator and iPad team has, has done a great job because it feels really natural, um, to use the pen tool. It is just like working on the desktop, just as flexible. Um, and, and, and it's actually, 
uh, I think it's more a matter of getting comfortable with your Apple Pencil than, than getting used to the app. So I think they're really similar. Um, the one thing to be careful about, and this I mentioned yesterday on the stream too, is that there are a few features that are um, still specific to the iPad that aren't on the desktop yet. And if you use those, you need to make sure to expand your work before you bring it onto. Sarah, uh, I think that Cloud once you finish is going to look fantastic with our special feature. Yes, I think this is my excuse to. Uh, I believe so. <laughs> share it. So let's let's do that now. Because um, I'm not actually sure how much time we have left here. How, so how we, we have looking? 25 minutes before the design review. So actually, oh, thank great. you so much for the reminder. Um, we are going to be reviewing your daily creative challenge. So make sure to click on the challenge tab above the chat and share with us on Discord under feedback challenge channel, your uh, daily creative challenge. Remember today was day number one with Andrew O'Cradle drawing the Tory Fell with shapes and the transform again tool. Me and Sarah will be here to give you some feedback, some advice. Uh, you can ask questions while you submit your work as well. So make sure to do so because in about 25 minutes, ooh, I just seen I just seen one popping up while we were talking here. Oh, so I love that people are actually submitting as we talk. Make sure to submit your work because we look forward to review it. And again, this is a safe space where we're all learning, we're sharing. Sarah is actually working on the beta of Illustrator on the iPad. So we're learning together how to use this amazing new app that will be released on the 21st of October. And don't forget that you'll be able to grab your pre-order from the link in the chat and you'll be able to receive an early bird access to the app before the general release um, for the public. So make sure to click on that pre-order if you want to try the app before everyone else. Kitty's yes. saying, sorry, Kitty's saying I'm back to teaching so I don't get a chance to do these anymore. That's the right time to do it. <laughs> yeah. That's a great time to do it. Um, oh, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Oh, really? So yes, you'll get your Illustrator on iPad before anybody else if you get that pre-order. And then on that first day of Max, you can watch all the videos, get comfortable in your house, put your legs up, grab your iPad, and just make stuff with Illustrator on iPad. It's going to be the best day. That's what I'll be doing. Dream uh, jobs, dream jobs. <laughs> Working on the couch, like I was, I was saying yesterday, we went from the office to the house to the couch. So that's the workflow. <laughs> Fantastic. So Sarah is about to share one of our, I should say, favorite tool in Illustrator on the iPad. Sarah, I'm keeping my eyes peeled. I'm sure everyone else is. Please go and share with us those. All right. Tools. Cool. So my, uh, I shared the. The first one I shared is my number three in the top three favorites, which is the Shape Builder, um, which helps you combine or separate your shapes. But top two features that have made a big difference in my workflow, I use a lot of symmetry uh, when I'm creating uh, character arrangements, because there's usually multiple characters in the pieces that I create. And so being able to create symmetry, uh, what I would normally do is just make a copy of a shape, then I would flip it and then position uh, position the shape and make sure that they're still aligned. But as I start to add more pieces, that starts to get really complex and takes a lot of time to keep that symmetry where I want it. So the number two favorite tool for me is the mirror repeat tool. It's in this little repeat menu, last item in the tool menu on the right side of the UI. And I'll just tap mirror. I instantly get a mirrored copy of the shape and I can drag with this little bar um, to place that that copy wherever I like it. Uh, and what's super cool about this is that now I can actually uh, make edits. I could change the color. Um, I could make all sorts of modifications to the shape uh, and it will reflect it on the other side. You can even adjust the angles of those things. Um, it, it's just super cool. And then uh, once you're finished with it, if you don't need to edit anymore, you can also expand uh, that mirrored object out and you'll have two separate copies. So. Something I'll do uh, very often just to create little moments of interest would be to say like, oh, well maybe in the, let's select this, maybe in this second cloud, um, maybe instead of having it be happy, maybe this one I want to have a frown, just so there's a little bit of difference between the two. And so I can use the mirror tool to 
create that symmetry and then I can expand them to break the mirror and, and make any separate edits that I want. So I love that. Um, the mirror tool is a huge, huge time saver. Sorry if I'm giggling, but uh, we were talking about games and I just, when you when you made the cloud into a frown, I actually went on a frown, like, while I was looking at it. <laughs> and it just made me think when you guys, you know, I don't know if you ever happened to you, but when you play games, I play a lot of car games. I just kind of like move around and yes. just mimicking what happens there as well. And Sarah, before we kept going to the next feature, I really wanted to take care of a question from um, Krishna uh, about color theory. So I'm just going to pass it to you because I know that yesterday you talked about it. Um, I was asking, how do you select your palette? Mm -hmm. And Krishna was saying, uh, how to improve color combination knowledge? Oh, wonderful question. So there are so many ways to do this. Um, I mentioned yesterday that color is something that I have really struggled with. I don't think that I'm great at choosing colors. Um, and so I, I really look to other people um, for inspiration, um, whether that is, again, coming from games that I see or other art that I find on, on Behance or looking at the Adobe color site at color.adobe.com. That's a great place to go and grab color palettes that people have already created. Um, so that's a basic way to do it. If you really want to uh, get deeper into color theory, there are lots of wonderful books um, that have been around as a part of you know design school curriculum for forever um, that you can go and really learn about why certain colors work together, um, how to create harmony with color, um, and, and, and really dig into more of the science of how color works together. There's also, and you can Google all of these things too, um, and get the free education instead of, uh, instead of having to pay for this education, <laughs> just Google it. Um, but, or go to YouTube, um, YouTube University. Uh, the, um, you can learn a lot about the psychology of color too, and, and, what certain what uh what feelings emotions. Yeah. and emotions um can be evoked through the use of different colors and that can play a big part in in what you want to convey in a piece of artwork uh and so i think you know doing research like that to understand some of the basics of how colors are created and combined and maybe even understanding how they're created on computers versus how they're created uh with paint on a palette or on a canvas um, would also be really um, valuable. But if you're just looking for great color combinations, I love the colors.adobe.com. Um, if you're used to saving those palettes, you have access to them um, in uh, Illustrator on iPad as well as Fresco, just like you do on the desktop, um, all of these libraries. I have all of these um, different color themes that I have saved from the Adobe site, uh, from the color site. Uh, with with color combinations that I think look good, um, and and I think that's a, a a great way to start experimenting with color. But I think for um, uh, for a lot of us, it just comes with experience and playing around. Like if you find an artist who uses colors you love, sample those colors and see how you can use them. Um, it also looks like there are a few people mentioning. Uh, Valeria has a, a a book from Ava Heller, The Psychology yeah. of Colors. Yes, it's a um, super amazing book. And, yeah. and uh, can, do you see the comment from Joe Dorgo, which I think is super, super cool. Don't forget the colors is also cultural and contextual, which I it think has. is super yes. relevant. And so there's, I, I think that's one of the things that I love about art um, at all. It's just that we all are bringing us from our cultural differences, from the way we were raised, from our work and life experiences, so many different aspects into color. Um, there, there was this one artist who I actually met at Pictoplasma at the Academy um, who came from Mexico and talked a lot about how his upbringing um, and the colors and like the festivals that he was a part of as a kid in Mexico influenced the colors he used in his work. And when he showed us photographs of those and you compared them side by side, you really felt that. And um, now, whenever I see his work, that's exactly what I think of. And, and I love that. And so uh, I think it's also color gives us this opportunity to bring our own personal stamp onto the things that we create. Uh, and, and likewise, I think I'm also in awe of people who know how to work in black and white. Um, <laughs> I've tried to do that. It's really hard, but it's a great exercise in contrast. Uh, and, and learning how to make uh, colors that contrast well. One other thing that popped up in chat that I did want to call out because I do think it's a, a, a feature not used as much in, in Illustrator on the desktop that is amazing. Uh, Peter mentioned recolor 
in Adobe Illustrator. Um, if you if you haven't uh, ever used the recolor feature, uh, search for that and read up on on what that can do for you because that can actually allow you to swap out uh, color. And there palettes. is so much coming for you as well. I don't want to oh. say too much, but I'm just saying, just dropping it there and leaving it. Make sure that you check out all the videos on Illustrator coming up after Max. The release is going to be doing. Uh, Adobe Max, there is some stuff related to what we're saying that is going to be mind-blowing. Uh, I don't know how I'm supposed to wait until <laughs> the 21st now. It's going to be the longest few weeks of my life waiting for this. It's going to be so exciting. So, waiting so for exciting. Christmas. Making life so much easier for us to work. And I remember something that one of the um, Adobe Illustrator engineers said about uh, making sure that they helped us to create an interface of the product that gets out of the way so we can create. And I think that's the, the feeling that I'm getting. The more that I work with the app, I kind of like forget even which environment I'm working with. I'm just focusing and focusing in the work that I'm doing I, yes. with, the, with the creative cloud being integrated with the color services. Um, also there is a uh, Capture integrated in Photoshop that allows you to create color palettes. That's another thing oh. that I wanted to uh, throw in the plate regarding color palette. If you do open Photoshop and you head to your creative library, if sorry, creative cloud library with any photo, illustration, image, whatever, a screenshot of anything, a photo that you took from your phone, you click on the little plus icon and you'll be able to launch Adobe Capture service within Photoshop. You didn't even have to leave the app. And that will allow you to select color, create a color palette and update it into your, your library, like three clicks. And you can also move them around and do as many as you want is super amazing. So the interface had literally been there to support us to create, um, which is super, super cool. Awesome. But, we're really so I want to show. To... Yes, I want to show yes. two things before we run out of time. Um, but now I feel like tonight I'm going to have to play with Photoshop and that capture tool <laughs> because I didn't know this. That's awesome. Um, That's super useful. Which is also a great thing. Like if you're out and about and taking, if you're able to go out, <laughs> um, if you're taking photos of things, if you see colors at an event or you're out, like here in, in New England, it's it's fall. And so all of the trees are changing color. It's really beautiful outside. Snap a photo of that and bring it into Photoshop so that you can use Capture to help you um, isolate some of those colors and make some, uh, use nature to inspire uh, your work. And absolutely, uh, there's so many uh, great opportunities there. So Sarah, um, we got about 12 minutes before we jump into the daily creative challenge. A big reminder to everyone to submit your work on Discord for the daily creative challenge day number one. And while Sarah is gonna blow our mind with uh, this amazing feature of Illustrator on the iPad for now beta, but coming up for you and Max. And as I said, you can click on the pre-order in order to have it before everyone else, before the actual release. I wanna see in the chat, what's your favorite color? Sarah, I'm gonna start with you. What's your favorite color? Oh boy, um, <laughs> I lately I've been I I've been uh, using orange a lot, so I think I'm going to say orange. But it changes all okay. the time. So I got a primary color, which is my forever favorite color, which is a tile like between actually it's called grue between green and blue. Oh, uh, the yeah. grue peacock sort of shade, if you know what I mean. Um, I like it. But then I get like secondary top. So now I'm in like bottle green. Uh, last year, my secondary color was deep blue or pink. I, I, went, I went through a pink face lately. Nice. <laughs> so I got my faces of different colors, but uh, I love it. I can see a lot of purple in the chat. Yeah, chat's going, going crazy for purple. Yes, but let's look at these features. I'm excited to see how All this right. look, cloud is going to look like. All right. So this is my number one favorite feature. I've been talking about creating mandalas and and it's like the Adobe Illustrator team just knew that I needed this. And so they've created a tool or feature that helps you create uh, the radial symmetry that you need in order to create a mandala. A um, super duper tool, let me yes, say. Yes, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna nickname this tool. Uh, and then maybe in a future version, they'll change it to, to that name. Um, but what you do, and this is just, it's this is delightful. You can spend hours playing with this. Select the object that you want to create a radial symmetry uh, with. 
And then you go to the repeat menu. Again, it's the very last tool on the right end of the toolbar and you choose radial. And it right away makes all of these copies uh, in a radial path that you can manipulate. There's a little dragger uh, to the right side of the bounding box where you can control how many copies of your object are there. So if you want something abstract, if I'm less interested anymore in this being a cloud, um, I can create uh, uh, this very abstract shape. Um, or if I want to have them be separate, this is kind of neat because the pencils are all connecting. Um, I can reduce the number of copies. Um, but again, another thing that I can do is uh, is change the angles of those. So there is a, oh, I just lost my pencil. <laughs> Reconnect it, there we go. Um, I can jump into this object and I can change the angles okay. of them and move them around. Uh, so maybe I want the pencils to all come together in the middle. Um, I can I can do that really easily. Uh, you can also jump in and make edits to the character. So if I decided that I, you know, wanted to change um, the eye, and let's say that I wanted one green eye and one, uh, let me go back to my palette here. Let's do one green eye and one pink eye. In the meantime, Yuri said, um, it's such a terrible question. I have different favorite color for each occasion. And then he wrote again. <laughs> I didn't mean it negatively. I was like, don't worry. <laughs> I understood what you meant. That yeah. you just have too much to choose from. That's absolutely cool. Every color. So the other thing that you can do again, and this is where this radial symmetry tool becomes really powerful, is if I've manipulated these uh, in, in a way that I really like, and I'm going to stop messing with this now. So let's say I like this. Um, I can actually place radial symmetry objects inside of each other. So here's one. I'm going to go into this tool again and hit radial symmetry. And now I've created uh, another layer of symmetry into this object that is made up of uh, that original piece. Oh my gosh. Um, and so you can get really complex if you want to. Um, and you just, you have full control over the position um, and alignment. So if you want to make something really detailed and complex, you could you could introduce a lot of these uh, into a piece. So it's really, really fun. I've been using it to do some fan art recently. We took a look earlier in the stream at, um, at the Adventure Time piece. I also did one for um, another cartoon that I really love called Bravest Warriors. And this was the mandala that we created on the stream for that. You oh can my zoom God, in. that's so cute. You can zoom in really close to see all of the individual characters from that show. Um, if you've never seen this cartoon, it's a lot like Adventure Time. If you what Google, is it called again? It's called Bravest Warriors. Bravest um, Warriors. All of the episodes are on YouTube um, and it is very funny. Um, it has this adorable character right here, this oh. little blue character named Catbug, who's oh. one of the cutest characters <laughs> I think ever created. Um, but anyway, so I created that using the radial symmetry tool. And uh, again, it just, it sped up my workflow so much. That's uh, so cool. That I'm very lucky. So I think the other Amazing. thing that we should show before yeah. we run out of time is maybe to show how we can access um, these Illustrator files from the iPad uh, on your desktop. Yes, please. And just one second, because we have a question uh, regarding uh, Illustrator on the iPad and how to right. uh, get there. So I'm gonna let you uh, tell everyone what's what's the deal, what we're working with, and how they can get there with Illustrator on the iPad. Perfect. So Illustrator on the iPad is coming out very soon. The re official release date is October the 21st, which is also the first day of Adobe Max. Um, if you would like to get access to uh, Illustrator on the iPad before anybody else does, you can pre-order um, the app now on the App Store. You'll get it a little bit before the rest of the world so that you can start creating ahead of everyone else. And get your work posted so that we can check it out. I will be looking for everyone's work on that day because I am so excited for this app. It's my dream app, uh, but you can get it now or, or basically pre-order it now and get ready for October the 21st. Uh, when it will be fully available to the world. Yes, uh, and, and I see that Budaval has also placed a link in the chat. So you can just click on the link in order to get your pre-order. Excellent. Oh, so we got like, 
five minutes before the uh, reviews. I've seen that uh, on Discord, there are not many artworks. So make sure to go ahead on Discord and post uh, the dedicated challenge number one. We'll be here to review it in just four minutes. But if there are no many to review, we can perhaps jump back into the illustrators uh, with Sarah. So make sure to stay tuned with us. But let's see how does the sync work with that desktop top. All right, so I am going to share Illustrator on my desktop. Um, so let me find it. <laughs> Let's change the layout. Here we go. So that is shared. So uh, we're looking now at Illustrator on the desktop and something that is great. And this isn't just uh, true for uh, Illustrator on iPad and Illustrator, but for uh, all of the Adobe apps now is that you can save your work to the cloud and have easy access. So for me, I, I do spend a lot of time at my desktop because I'm streaming, uh, but also just trying to find other places to work so that I'm not always stuck in my studio. I'll go outside, uh, go sit by the water if I'm lucky and, and go work mobily there. But very often I might want to finalize or add more detail or do something else with my work. And so being able to easily get to it on the desktop is, is super important. Um, and so we've been working on these icons today on the desktop. And maybe tonight I decide that I want to go in and clean them up, get them ready for Behance. Uh, I can go to the home screen in Illustrator. And uh, if I uh, click on cloud documents, I can actually see all of my uh, Adobe cloud work um, and scroll through those. Um, but right there on the home screen in my recent view, I can actually see that four minutes ago, my iPhone uh, Illustrator file was saved and, and open this directly um, on the desktop. So there's that radial symmetry we were playing with. And here are all of those, uh, all of those icons. And so, uh, everything is exactly as uh, I had designed it, um, and I can go back and forth. So any we got all the layers here, there. Everything all is the, the same. layers exactly. All the layers, just as I had them organized, are available um, on the desktop. And again, the only thing you have to keep in mind is that some of those features, the grid, the radial symmetry, uh, the mirror tool. Uh, they're not yet available on the desktop, so they're going to expand when you bring them on. And an example of what will happen um, when you do that, if you look at yesterday's icon uh, of the WhatsApp icon, I used the grid repeat tool to create the teeth for my character. And because I didn't expand that and clean it up ahead of time, um, the grid uh, is has expanded itself. Uh, <laughs> and, and so that's easy to fix. This is just basically shapes in a clipping mask. It's easy to tweak. Uh, but that's the only only consideration that you'd have to make. Everything else is there. Um, any clipping masks that you've made on the iPad are going to also be available um, on the desktop. And I guess it works the same. So, for example, now if you clean up those um, that the repeat that you had, if you clean the uh, bottom up, it will be automatically updated on the iPad when you go back in the app. Yes, it it absolutely will. So if I make some uh, changes here, uh, we will see those also. And here's an actually an example of what that grid repeat looks like behind the scenes. These are all the shapes that are part of it. And I can go into uh, into that mask and actually uh, change that. I've never done this cleanup before. I'm gonna try it here. <laughs> can you select it by, I'm just asking, cause I don't know how that works. So I'm selecting the shapes inside of the mask oh. right now. And the other thing that I should be able to do I can see Yash saying that it's late in India, 1.59, I guess, a.m. And he's watching us. Thank you so much for being here with us. It's so late and you're just sticking around with us. That's super cool. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Wow. Gotta love our international community. Uh, so Vizar is asking if there is going to be a plan to pay for both desktop and iPad. I believe that Illustrator on the iPad comes with your Adobe CC uh, subscription. Mm -hmm. So Sarah, I don't know if you have many information about that or... Yes, if, if you have a Creative Cloud uh, subscription, then you have access to all of these, um, uh, all of the Adobe mobile apps as well. Uh, so you should be able to um, continue to access those. All you gotta do is log in with your Adobe ID. Exactly. 
and so sorry oh no go right ahead no we're just saying that we got uh, about three seconds so <laughs> we're, it's time to jump into our Perfect. discord and um i can see that uh, i don't know sarah if you are in there we can jump maybe into my desktop um, we were also on your desktop so Either desktop, we're here on Discord. Yeah, let's go with yours. Um, again, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. It looks like we're going to have some time to jump back into Sarah's iPad and talk a little bit more about the Illustrator on the iPad before the end of the stream. And uh, I'll, if you haven't been into the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge before, let me tell you how to join. So first and foremost, you can click on the Challenge tab above the chat. Um, and you can also uh, go ahead and uh, browse behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. So you have the, as I said, the tab above the chat in order to submit your work. But if you never take part of the Illustrator Creative Challenge, this is the time to start. Andrew Okradle, another amazing Adobe live streamer has launched today challenge number one, which was creating and drawing the Tori Fell using simple shape and the transform again tool. You can watch the video by clicking on the button here and also get the file in order to follow along and create your own. The second part of the challenge is coming up right here because if you click on the community chat, you'll be transported into the wonderful world of Discord, uh, which is our community chat where you can ask questions, share your work, ask for advice, and interact with a wide community of international professionals from all over the world. Uh, we got our Adobe fantastic team overlooking the work. Then we have our wonderful mentor, Colby, Andrew, Jack, Kathleen, uh, Rocky and moderator, like our lovely team and Joss. And of course, you guys, our fantastic community on Discord. We have over a thousand people online right now. But before we jump into the actual challenge, um, I wanted to show you something else regarding the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. So perhaps I've seen many of you guys are uh, just starting with Illustrator. If you actually scroll down at the bottom of the page, you'll be able to get Adobe Illustrator as a free trial by simply clicking on download illustrator i believe is a seven day trial so you can get experimenting while uh, following the challenges and if one challenge is not enough all you have to do is to scroll down into the page and you'll be able to access all the past challenges that i ran a few times ago julia masalska has run um also we have paul trannies running the challenges and you have all the videos here and still all the starter file are attached so so much to learn so much to practice with as you can see each single one of this card will be revealed so i strongly recommend you to click on the big blue button where it says hi and it's going to say your name of course not fatty but take the challenge and by clicking on the big blue button you will be reminded every day to follow along the 30 minutes challenge with andrew for this week but let's jump into our community chat i can see that uh there is only one design by uh Mike Alla, make sheet designer, and we're going to review that and we're going to review some covers. Sarah, looks like we kept everyone distracted with an illustrator on the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Peter says, what? That was two hours? It felt like 20 minutes. I know when you... Time goes fast when you have fun, they say. It does. <laughs> I'm just looking in the chat. So um, let's see. Yuri says, didn't feel like lowering my confidence. Don't worry, this is a safe place. We are here to learn together. So I always say, even if your work is not finished, I'm gonna refresh the page. We're gonna look at this uh, first drawing and then we're looking at the cover. But if you feel like submitting, even if you're not done, even if you're unsure what you're doing, we are here to learn together. So this is actually the perfect time to get confident and by sharing with everyone. Sarah has shown us her very early stage um, sketches that they were not perfect, but they were the basics of her design. So you need to get started at some point and, and that's the place to get started for sure. So let's go and have a look at my color work. That looks pretty neat. It's very intricate. What it do you think, is. Sarah? This, the detail in this was incredible. Um, I would love to see the uh, outline preview of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking like the, so I know that Andrew's stream introducing today's challenge was only two hours ago now. And 
uh, McCullough finished this, which is amazing. Unbelievable. Um, one thing I really love about this is the, it looks like it, it's duplicated behind. Uh, so you've got the gold uh, Eiffel Tower oh, shape in the front. shadow as well. Yeah, and, and so it's created this wonderful 3D feel uh, to the oh, piece. it's not the shadow. You're right. It's because because it's, it's basically is empty. The tower is empty, so it's actually the back it's, of the Torifel. But it's just from beautiful. the inside. It's Super immediately cool. recognizable. Um, this is this is an awful lot of work. I am I am very impressed that uh, the Michaela was able to finish this uh, because there's just a lot going on here. Um, I also really love the stamp in the corner. Yes, that's exactly what I was zooming in on. DCC World Tour Paris France. Are you guys I gonna get to Italy pin. as well? I'm very curious. I'm gonna just keep my eyes peeled just in case there is some Italy stuff going on. Yeah. <laughs> but absolutely well done. I agree. And I love how with simple shapes, uh, you've been able to recreate an iconic scene. You have a lovely gradient coming through the back, just simply easing in. And the beauty of having the logo on the corner just really lets the Eiffel Tower stands out. And again, very intricate work, very well done. I really love that 3D, the, the back, that's super. And I think Sarah, she yeah. must have also uh, done like a different work. It's not, it's not simply a copy. Because I don't know mm -hmm. if you see at the back, but you have a, almost a reverse of it. Like if you see the diamond, the gold diamond, it comes with its own drop shadow. But at the back, the diamond is on a different position. Oh, you're um, right. Offset. Yeah. So you really see the other side. It just gives you an idea that it's not the same thing. I think that's super clever. Yeah, very, very is, amazing. This is beautiful. The other thing from a, a composition uh, perspective that I really love is you're you're almost taken up the tower as you look at at this picture so you've got the lines on the path and the green space that is drawing your eye towards the base of the tower and then obviously again with the triangle shape of the eiffel tower uh your eye continues to travel up and uh bringing you right to the peak of that it's so it's compositionally like this may appear really simple but it, it it's it's beautifully done it's very clever um and it encourages you to like really look closely at, at the piece, which I is completely agree. Fantastic. And also not having anything that competes with it uh, allows you really to to go and, and appreciate the top of it. Fantastic. But we can review the covers because I know that yesterday uh, when Andrew was launching the stream, uh, he was also doing a little cover to introduce the theme, which is the world tour. And we can see that Didi has done a minimal design for a stamp. Uh, so we have a world tour stamp and we were talking about icon before. So yeah. Sarah, do you want to give any feedback, maybe ad advice or suggestions? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I love the idea behind this. I think using a globe um, is a wonderful idea. The globe, pe the globe piece of this is really strong. Um, and then wrapping the text around it, I think is, is a great, uh, is a great approach. One suggestion that I'd have as I look at this is um, I would try to make the text uh, span the entire empty space of, of the globe. So I would take it from edge to edge on kind of the, the hanger of the globe. Mm -hmm. um, I might also, um, if I was going to work on this, I might also try to make the height of the text be the same height as that uh, as the stand uh, on the globe, just, just to have it blend in a little bit more. Uh, but I do think that having a different, like my inclination is always to use uh, sans serif fonts um, but here, uh, uh, Didi has chosen to use a serif font, which has this strength, uh, like a real strength to it. And I just, I appreciate when people uh, can, can introduce that into, into a piece. Um, I might try to use it a little bolder just so that it, it doesn't get lost in the globe. But, um, but I think this is a wonderful concept. So I'm going to give a little bit of a spin here since we're talking about a globe. And uh, what I will do, first of all, and I very well noted regarding the serif, I think that it almost gives us an idea of an old historic book. So it fits the theme of, 
old charts, uh, you often, very often see a serif. So I think that's a very good fit in terms of topic. Uh, but in terms of design spins, Sarah was mentioning to create, fill in the space, or perhaps leave the same amount of gaps on both sides in order to give symmetry um, to your icon. Or why not to remove the bar? Sarah, you gave it a name. I don't know what's the name in English yeah. at all. Um, and substitute the text instead of the bar, if it makes any sense. Oh, that's so, a really cool idea. So we we don't have to use, we don't have to have both sides of the circle. We just have the world tour instead of the bar. We make it a little bit bolder. So maybe that comes through as a logo and an icon and we introduce the text as a graphic element as well. I don't know, just a suggestion there. If That's you really are cool. in chat, I know that many people usually, uh, when we give suggestion, if they are in chat, if they're watching, they can implement, give us a shout, give me a shout. I'm always on Discord as well. I have a lot of people that message me, more than happy to look at your work if you actually implement it. But very fantastic work, Didi. I love also the using one color with icon. I think that's very, very strong. Viola, she was in the chat before. I don't know if she's still there, but she's uh, uh, very often in streams. And here is her cover for the Daily Creative Challenge World Tour. Oh, that looks like very professional. Yeah, it really does. This brings in that nice old world, uh, mm -hmm. like map book or atlas feel, which is really nice. I think the, the use of green here as well, just to contrast all of the yellows and oranges that are happening. Uh, is is really uh, is a is a great color choice. I think the only suggestion that I have here, because I, I really love the layout and the organization of this, is I might pare back the number of fonts that are being used. Um, I personally, when I'm creating piece, I usually try to stick to two at most, uh, just to have more consistency in the piece. Um, but uh, but that being said, I think uh, I'm I'm into this. I think this is really cool. I really like it and I completely agree. I will perhaps um, just simplify the text in the adventure guaranteed because I think in terms of kerning, the guaranteed kind of squished together. Uh, so maybe maybe try with a sans serif, very simple font. You've got a beautiful image. Um, you got a beautiful icon in there as well. Two circles, line. Uh, you have a, a lot going on in the image, which is wonderful. And that's why I will take a step back uh, with the font, just simply because the less uh, images conflict with each other, the easier we have to uh, we can see them. So the, is, the easier is for our eye to to take in the image as one. So that's the only thing that I will say. Slowly, one step back with the maybe with the green font by simplifying that, and you're ready to go. It looks very professional. Love the way they use the image. Uh, also with the background a little bit faded. So again, it doesn't compete with the logo. Very well done. Uh, we have uh, Krishna's asking a question. Uh, which is your favorite font, Sarah? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> favorite fonts. Um, I think it changes depending on uh, what I'm working on. Um, there is a font that I just started working with, though, that has become my, my new favorite. I'm going to have to look and see what it is. Uh, open one of my projects here. I think it might be called Amphitura. But I, as I mentioned, I, I love yep. uh, sans serif fonts. I also like to uh, to try to create my own fonts. Um, I think that can be a lot of fun. Um, I talking uh, about fonts, Sarah. Look at this one. This is the other oh, submission yes. from Key. That's really cool. Oh, I love this with all the stamps, like a passport. Very vintagey, but at the same time modern. Um, very, very, very cool. I love the the grunge effect. Yeah, that's this is great. There's wonderful texture throughout this this piece. And what the about the globe the with the the globe with the we have a globe and the flag incorporated? Yes. So and, clever. And that's really nice because those uh, those flags are following the contours of the globe uh, rather than just being flat. So there's some dimension that's being introduced here, which is which is really cool. Uh, and again, I this makes me miss traveling so much. <laughs> I want these stamps. 
<laughs> I'll literally go like which one, checking out which, which yeah. country they were. Perhaps in here, I will still suggest to create, in this case, we have only one font. Um, so I know, probably say, Claudia, you're not happy with everything. Before you say, no, it's too much font. Now you're saying another one. Uh, my choice is usually to go two top three, uh, but usually having a contrast with a serif or something that is more ornate or a display, and then having a clear font to use for information. So for example, what I will do here, the AI daily challenge, I will bring that back into a very clean and simple font. So, cause that's just information and you can use the font they use for war tour just to leave it there and enjoy uh, the actual world tour um, main art piece and just Keep the daily information, a daily creative challenge information as just a informative and um, with a simple, clean serif font. And maybe uh, explore that with a world tour in New York, even if those stamps actually don't touch the stamps. They're, they're, they're too beautiful. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. What do you think, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, I love that suggestion. I think that's a great idea that this, I, I, I'm not sure which font this is, but I think it works really, really well on the stamps. And so you could draw more attention to those if you were to use a simpler font for the the text in the center of the piece. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a great idea, Claudia. Um, so um, Viruval is saying, Samuel is asking, do you use Illustrator or a third party application? We use Illustrator that before was Illustrator on the iPad uh, that we use with Sarah. As we said, we are working in beta, it's not launched yet, but you can apply to pre-order Illustrator on the iPad in order to have a preview before the official launch. And I know that before there was a little um, confusion with the date, October 31st, October 21st uh, will be the official launch. But if you click on the pre-order link, you'll be able to have access before the general release. And again, all of those pieces are also created on Illustrator, in this case, for desktop. So fantastic work here. And let's see if we see a couple more. I think we have a little bit more time. We have Ceci right. uh, with a create a stamp using multiple multiply blend mode and before we review this one i also wanted to answer regarding the font because i know there were many um uh, font questions and posts in the chat i um i'm currently I've, I've a, i'm a big gotham uh, fan so gotham is my one of my favorite font and it's been for a very long time but i'm kind of definitely on the big trend of the display chunky uh, um, uh sans serif font uh that is been used by many many websites and brands lately included dropbox uh, and the one my point of choice which i believe is a free font is called imperial integral integral cf uh, which is a very very cool font so if you want to check it out since you guys are talking about fonts that's my fave at the moment but let's have a look at sassy work sarah what do you think we have a super jet touring yeah. the world yeah, this is great. It's it's interesting when I first looked at this as I was scrolling through the chat, I didn't I thought it was just abstract. Um I didn't realize that this is a plane that is basically facing me head on uh which I love. So you've got like that explosion behind it of power that there's movement. This jet is coming at you <laughs> fast. <laughs> I'm a little anxious now, but uh but again like exploring uh so this this piece was meant to explore blend modes and uh, and so you can see how that's been used, especially with the overlays of text over the artwork, uh, mm -hmm. which I really love seeing how you can create just different shapes uh, and effects in that way. Compositionally, I really like the layout. I think spacing out the text to, uh, to fill the space here was a great approach. And again, this is another case where we've seen a piece that uses a world tour stamp uh, yes. in the corner of it. So cool. Which is, which is really cool. With the, with the texture on it. And Paloma yeah. is saying, love the texture on the stamp. I completely agree. Super cool. And uh, what I will do if I had the chance to manipulate and put my own input on the design is to uh, perhaps, I know that that's the theme, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, but I will just perhaps choose a CD and just use the text, exactly the same font, everything that you've done, but maybe put a CD and a date uh, and just create a stamp cut out shape because I think that these will look amazing as a special edition stamp uh, for postcards, for uh, letters, if you, if you know what I mean, just like a, uh, a letter stamp. 
I think that's a very, very cool design for a special editions of stamp. And uh, since we're here, I wanted to share a very cool information before we finish off this amazing stream. Um, as I said, I, I love to uh, have my own spin on things and I will be able to do so very soon uh, because me and Jesus Ramirez are launching a new series called Rework It and we'll be able to uh, change and perhaps enhance or give you advice on your own work. So if you head on my website, iamclady.com and then click on the little submit your design form, you'll be able to be to have your artwork featured during the stream. First stream is going to be on October 7th and then October 8th. And again, it's going to be me and Asus Ramirez. So we can co we can cover a different range of app. You have it here, Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, Rush, Premiere Pro, or in, and of course, Adobe Stock. And if you give us your information and of course, um, allow us to use your image during the stream, me and Asus will contact you prior and then we'll be able to work and feature your artwork for the stream. Again, make sure that you submit your work so we'll be able to uh, then featured, have your work featured during the stream and rework it. But let's jump back on Discord and let's see if we have any other uh, work. I think, oh, we have we have one more stamp. Let's do, let's do Jonna stamp. And then pro perhaps we jump back into your uh, app as well. This is really cool. So this stamp, again, so this, this reminds me of a travel agency's uh, yes. <laughs> stamp. Like I could imagine seeing this as signage outside of a travel agency. Um, the I like how the text is wrapping around uh, the the globe uh, with with this big wave in it. Is Brighton known? I guess Brighton is a water a waterfront yes. uh, town city. Um, so I really love the waves. I think that is, it's a great uh, addition into this. It adds, it's, this has a little bit of whimsy in it. It looks, it looks fun. Um, it makes me want to get in the water and get thrown around in those waves. I think one <laughs> suggestion that I'd have, uh, I think I really want to be outside today. I keep referencing getting out, uh, but it's raining here. So that's not going to happen. Uh, one suggestion that I would have for this piece would be to uh, take a look at um, some examples of water, of like simple water drawing um, for some references in how to use light and how to create highlights in the water. Um, I love, I love that this piece is introducing those little, little lines that kind of trace the shape, the white uh, strokes that trace the shape of the waves. Uh, but there may be too many of them. I would probably reduce how many there are and really think okay. about the light source. Um, but yeah, other yes. than that, love the movement that the water brings. Absolutely, I think I, I I love it, and I I agree with everything that you were saying. I was uh, my little concern was with the with the highlights coming in uh, inside the wave and with the consistency of it. Um, so that that will be my my only concern. But I love the the fact that it is related to the waterfront. That's the beauty of icon to understand right away what is the message there and uh, what is you know. You or right away give us give us an idea of the city and the place that we're exploring during the world tour. So I think that's an absolutely fantastic job with this icon. And again, I'm a big fan of keeping things simple in order to um, make sure that the comprehension is is the king. Content is king. Oh, we have one more. We have one more. Probably we have one more minutes. Let's see. We have a, a J says create not done because it came late into the stream, but here we are, Sarah, if you um, scroll back and perhaps refresh yeah. your Discord, we can give a little feedback to Jay. Jay, thank you so much for sharing your work with us. All right, I dig this. This is cool. Uh, finished or not, Jay, this is a great, this is a great start. And I, I'd be interested to see where you're gonna take it uh, from here. I love simplicity. And so I'm really drawn to this. Mm -hmm. um, I love the sky is using just three, three different colors. You're using some nice big ellipses to create uh, those different colors. And again, you know, talking about composition, um, I, I love how the lines of this are all leading you towards the Eiffel Tower, which is obviously the centerpiece um, of this. And it's also really fascinating just to see the different approaches that people will take to creating the Eiffel Tower. So uh, Jay's approach doesn't have as much, uh, you can't see through the tower 
here. Mm -hmm. It's you're looking at it more as a complete shape um, and you don't lose anything from that. You, it's it, This is a little bit of a simpler approach. There's still, a, I, and I will say, when I say simple, I don't mean uh, not as good. Um, I mean, using simpler shapes uh, to create this. Well, and first still of all, being that was the convey. goal of the stream. So it's, it's definitely what was the goal of the of the delicate challenge. And it Beautiful. also offered great consistency with the sky. So even the sky is built from different shapes. And it, I, I'm a, I love this sky. I think that is, is two circles and a rectangle, but I think that the way that it builds depth and the contrast with the light color. So you got the, you know, the dark circle in the middle build, build in contrast with the Tori Fell. And then you got, you know, darker color and then you still got the light at the edge almost as a opposite to a bit like a lighter vignette framing mm -hmm. the image and the lovely clouds done with the um, rounding corner widget for the, the rectangles, I think I think it's very, there is great consistency in the work. Yeah, the, the clouds are fantastic. I, I love seeing how people create clouds. These ones are giving me very strong Super Mario 2 yes. vibes. <laughs> yes, I'm uh, a fan. <laughs> and, and that makes me like this even more. Uh, it, this is great. Like I could actually imagine this being a level in a Super Mario game. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is absolutely fantastic. I, there, and I think we're running out of time. I don't know how many minutes we have left. I don't know if we even have like two minutes. Yeah, I think we're, I don't know. we're running down the clock here. Oh, so it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> so wow. thank you so much to, for everyone. Thank you, Sarah, for being here. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me. This has been a real pleasure. <laughs> and go and download the pre-order for Illustrator on the iPad. We'll see you soon, everyone. Thank you so much for being Thanks, here everybody. with us. <laughs> Bye.